little stuck inside. I uh, try to make like a funny intro to this video, but uh, it it <laughs> it just got dark really fast and it got really cringy. And uh, I try to contain all of it into one. I don't know. Just just check it out. Who are you? You owe me about 10 grand. What are you wearing? This is all I could afford. I think you got the wrong house. I'm gonna make you suffer the fate. I'm gonna make you watch this. <sighs> yeah, that's uh, that's some pile of cringe right there. Anyways, since we're all stuck in the house and I figured that I can give you some recommendations on, you know, an old TV show. 21 Jump Street, starring young Johnny Depp. This show consists of five seasons. And a spinoff. So the episode begins with the mom insulting the daughter. Ten seconds. What's the difference? You only listen for one. Come on, anorexia, dinner. Real food, remember? Prehistoric. Toxic fire on the old heart. As they talk about old people while having a nice dinner, then badass Kenny shows up. Starts insulting his father about he doesn't like playing the clarinet. Needed compass to find his own hands. So, tell me, how's the clarinet coming? Ah, oh, terrific. I'm turning boredom into an art form. Now, Kenny, that's the same clarinet your father learned to play when he was your age. Ah, uh, yeah, it must come in real handy when it's to serenade some doofus into a whole life policy. What is it about me that you don't respect? Nothing. I just think the clarinet stinks. So does the meatloaf. What a wonderful family they got there. And some very bold thugs decided to rob Kenny's wonderful family dinner time in broad daylight, I tell you, and uh, to disrupt them. Turns out, Kenny owes them $6,000. Mom, please! Look, guys, I'll get it. I... <laughs> That's some stellar acting from Kenny right there. I'm pretty sure that earned him a Tony or two. Whoa, what was that TV even made out of, man? Look at that. Anyways, the thugs threaten them. They take their car, and uh, they escape from their lives in the middle of broad daylight, and somehow they don't get caught. At all. Look, they're even right there in the middle of a neighborhood. Then it cuts to Tom Hansen, the young buck cop, trying to become the best rookie out there. Wait, did that cop just walk out of the ladies' restroom? They talk about how Tom is a, has a baby face and how he's hot-headed and always down to play hero all the time. They eventually get a call from a house of servants, none other from our boy Kenny. One zero six rolling, over. Tom and his partner arrive at the parents' house, talking about who stole the car, as they're questioning about what's happening and what's going on, and how Kenny knows these thugs. Eventually, Tom tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Kenny and tries to figure out, hey, try to be man-to-man -to, -man to get him. But Kenny tries to be a little bitch and cries and says, I'm not going to say anything because, hey, I'm tougher than you. Spit. God, man, this little Kenny guy just uh, annoying as hell, man. He's just like, you ain't till you spit. Ooh. I'm going to walk away right now. But he ain't no snitch, though. I ain't going to lie. And on another note, I don't even know what the hell that clown thing is, but that thing looked looking scary. Eventually, they got done with questioning, and then you hear about Tom and his partner about how he uh, how his wife gets him off at night. The old lady does put me to sleep, kiddo. That's what makes the marriage work. And uh, they eventually let him drive. Shut up! And of course, here we go, another crime. Surprisingly, at night. 
in the middle of a gas station where in the middle of town where no one could be seen at all. What is this place, Gotham? The robbers eventually escape, making a clean getaway. And you know, look, look, like fucking look, look, there's a church and fried chicken over there and nothing. Leading back to that, Tom and his partner uh, are discussing the matters about what happened between Kenny and his family. And they think that Kenny's on drugs. And, uh, eventually, that leads to, uh, the robbers passing him by. And Tom's partner, uh, sees him and just uh, tells him to follow him. Eventually, they get caught up. His partner asks a couple of questions. They don't know nothing. Everything okay? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Positive? Yeah, what's the problem? Just wondered why you stopped for a green light or so. Okay, John Henry, lights and sirens. All units in the vicinity at 1C for 6. A 211 just occurred. 126 North Kensington. Suspects are armed and in a late model gray sedan southbound on Roy Cross. Roger the call, Colonel. Tom and his partner eventually make it to the robbers, T-bowing them against to a pile of dirt randomly in, in the middle of a highway, um, smashing their radio during the process. As his partner goes, looks for a uh, payphone, the robbers start making fun of uh, Tom, saying how much of a short guy he is and how much of a baby face he is. You have some ID, son? This is all the ID I need. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I got one like that for being the best playground monitor at school AP. Hey, don't move, Triple! They get into a scuffle. Having three of those guys escaping and having one of them stay back. Got a nice crew they are. Definitely. And I don't know what this guy is, but man, I don't even know why he would even say this. Keep them away from me, huh? I feel like a child molest. Honestly, I don't even know why you would even say that, because I don't know what would compel you to even say that whatsoever. Tom gets mad, but instead of punching the man, he actually punches his partner, eventually breaking his nose. Three for three. Another broken nose. Gets back to his police station. Everyone's ragging on him about who punches on who. Uh, he eventually comes back and talks to his boss. His boss talks about how... Either he stays a desk jockey, or he joins an undercover program called 21 Jump Street. Ten years would be too old for this kind of assignment. Sit down. Let me lay it out for you. What am I doing? I don't even smoke. The department's got an undercover program. It's the mayor's baby. Nobody on the force knows about this except Silver Shields and up. It's called Jump Street Chapel. Now, the reason it's called that is because this particular undercover unit worked out of an old abandoned chapel in the corner of Jump Street and 6th. And Tom is on the mitts about even considering on anything. He's just angry that he's not good enough to be like his father. After everything else, uh, his uh, superior just, uh, so just think about it. Honestly, I thought that was the music for, you know, all those cop dramas. But it uh, turns out he's actually playing the music in the song. Honestly, I have no words because I thought that was part of the music background, but turns out it was Johnny Depp playing the saxophone, but I, I'm i baffled of what I have witnessed. It's a lot better than what I do. Cry in the shower. The next day, Officer Tom arrives at 21st Chapel, and there, meeting his other partners, Undercover partners, Officer Harry and Officer Doug. That's where you get to meet his chief of police, Jenko. A fun, loving, hippie guy, but also likes to take things serious. He was brought down and talked about how he needs to be uh, brought up to speed and how he needs to be tenified. 
And while you were out in the field getting your butt kicked by all the bad grown-ups, me and my guys here were training to do some real battle. You see, the way I look at it, child is the father of man. I mean, these bad grown-ups are coming from somewhere. They don't just hatch that way. That's why we're trying to yank them out while they're still in high school, Dig? Dig? Hey, spare me the rap about how I talk, okay? Yeah, I know. You went to Woodstock, right? Right on, brother. Now, we're about four weeks ahead of you here, Hanson. So I'm gonna have to rush you through some of the training. What kind of training? Hobbs! Gonna teach you how to be a teenager again, sport. How does that grab you? I'm talking about the bad kind. The kind that gets into trouble. The kind you're gonna have to be like so they think you're one of them. Dig? Hey, Hobbs! Wake up! Relax, relax. I'm up. Huh? Hanson, Hanson, Hobbs. Hi. So that being said, what does a good 80s classic need? A montage. So yes, Tom and Hobbs, they have a nice 80s montage of dressing him up and seeing, hey, how can we change this guy back into a teen? Technically, he's only 21. I don't... I mean, I don't, I don't really know, but they have like a whole montage of them, how to be a great teen again. I, I just don't understand because they're technically not really losing a couple of years. I mean, I'm 25 and I mean, I still kept up with the times of what, how to become a teen. Anyways, uh, Tom and Hobbs show them what's it like to be a teen again by shoving hot dogs and Hobbs' face and having a grand old time. What's up with that face? It's Tom's uh, first night undercover, and he, uh, they were telling this guy who assumed to have the drugs that they were looking for and that's infiltrating the school. So, as they do, they get the guy all nice and spicy and wild up so they can uh, do some investigation. Uh, they asked Tom to buy the drugs off of him and see if he's legit. And they said, don't make any arrests, we just need to see if he is selling the drugs and if he's one of the main operators. So Tom does his usual self, he tries to buy drugs. Spicy boy over here, he doesn't, he, he doesn't fall for it. He's, uh, he's like, nope, make sure that you're not a cop. Like, I'm just from Ohio. So Tom buys the drugs off the guy, he's like, no, show me the drugs. And he's like, here you go, boy. He's like, thanks a lot, Spicy boy. Then Spicy boy pulls a gun on Tom. Tom doesn't like that, and he's like, oh. Let me grab that gun from you for a second. Boom. You're under arrest. Jenko comes driving up and says, Boy, you done fucked up. And says, Hey, we needed this fool. Because you know why? We wanted to make sure that he was legit. And look, he just sold you a $200 pair of socks. Now all we had to do was let Spicy Boy go. And uh, guess what? You done fucked up. Oh, look, it's our boy Kenny. Polly trying to be a respectable man and pay off his debts that he probably owe about that six grand. Oh, never mind. I miscorrected. All right, then. So much for Kenny trying to be a good man. few days pass and uh, Thomas has to enroll in school. Jenko says, hey, you're going to have to enroll in school. we got to find out where these drugs are coming from. Since you lost our spicy boy, since uh, he's our informant. But I'm still waiting for clearance from that six grand from Parker Center. Hanson, we're going to let you get your feet wet at Amherst High. Put you in there for a couple of weeks. Hanson, you're a disciplinary transfer from Wilcox with a suspected drug problem and a very bad attitude. Dig? Everything you need to know is in this deal. Read it carefully, Hanson. And please, do me a favor. Try not to blow your cover on the first day. Okie dokie. There's absolutely nothing heavy going on in Amherst. So beyond my belief that uh, this next scene is pretty weird. Uh, they're in high school, and this shot just really makes it really odd. I don't even know why they wouldn't make these shots.
Tom's first day in school, and uh, he's already making some great strides with guess who other but Robert from the beginning. They both get into a nice little scuffle. They eventually get caught by their teacher and uh, they ask who he is and said, man, you make a great first impression. They eventually both go to the principal's office. Obviously, the robber gets uh, two weeks of detention and uh, turns out he's also a student here. <laughs> Impressive completion record, Bob. Seems like that Will Conti, you threw out an interception. Real tough guy, huh? <laughs> oh, not to mention a couple of notes here about a whip problem. Eventually, the principal's like, hey, are you a sports guy? I don't uh, play a lot of sports. We well, got a tough love program here in Amherst. I expect you and your old man to make it tomorrow night. Or I throw you out of the league. Well, thank you, sir. I, uh, but my father works nights and, uh, can't make it. Make him make it. Eventually, uh, Tom makes it back to his locker and he sees what up. Our boy Kenny tries to avoid eye contact with him because, you know, Tom's just got one of those faces. And then avoid, eventually, Kenny just starts flipping out. First of all, he wasn't even going near Kenny whatsoever, but he still flipped out anyways. But I guess that's what all the drugs is about. But hey, there is a part two to this video. I appreciate you watching. If there, if you did want me to make a part two, that'd be great. Uh, this is the first time me trying to do something like this. Uh, I know I could probably do better, but just uh, do what needs to be necessary. But uh, just thank you for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, hey, I'll probably do more into the future. Uh, anything, anything else but said, uh, my content's not gonna really change much. This is just kind of something that I wanted to try out and try out different projects. Since we are all stuck in a quarantine and everything else, I hope you guys are staying safe and everything else. Um, other than that, I appreciate you watching this video, and hopefully we can all get a nice little kick out of this. And, you know, without the support from you guys and everything else, and, you know, something like this uh, helps me keep me going and everything. So I appreciate you guys and everything else. And So, yeah, thank you for watching again.